You can imagine a ledger being a book where we can store our financial transactions. According to the new general ledger accounting in SAP. In SAP S4HANA, we distinguish between the leading ledger and the non-leading ledgers. Both the leading and the non-leading ledgers are also called standard ledgers that contain a full set of journal entries for all of our business processes. Let's look at this in a more detailed way. We are starting with the leading ledger. The leading ledger can be seen as a ledger for the accounting of the group. So here we are talking about a corporation, meaning that if we have one mother company with several subsidiaries, the leading ledger is used to reflect the accounting of the mother company. And in most cases, this will be IFRS. The leading ledger is integrated into all sub-ledgers, like accounts payable for our vendors and accounts receivable for our customers, asset accounting, and so on. It is also automatically assigned to all of our company codes in our client and cannot be deactivated. There can also be only one leading ledger per client. And the leading ledger is the only ledger which is integrated with controlling, so managerial accounting. So only financial values from the leading ledger can be posted to controlling. The non-leading ledger, on the other hand, is used to reflect the local accounting. So for instance, if we have one subsidiary in Germany, we can create one non-leading ledger to reflect the German gap, so the accounting principles of Germany. If we have another subsidiary in the United States, we can use another non-leading ledger for the United States and so on. Or we could even use one non-leading ledger for all of these subsidiaries, which is also best practice in most of the cases. Meaning that the non-leading ledger exists in parallel to the leading ledger. A non-leading ledger must be activated per company code, so it is not automatically assigned to all of our company codes. As said, non-leading ledgers are used to reflect country-specific accounting requirements. And one of the prerequisites is also that the fiscal year variant and the second and third parallel currency must be aligned with the leading ledger, so they can't deviate. Furthermore, we have a rather new topic called extension ledgers. Extension ledgers can be defined in addition to the standard ledgers, but they must be based on standard ledgers though. So meaning that they inherit the currency and fiscal year variant of the standard ledger they are based on. The same also counts for all of the company codes. So the company codes of the standard ledgers are taken over by the extension ledger. We can use the extension ledger to post financial data explicitly to them without posting to the other ledgers, meaning that we are only allowed to post manually to those extension ledgers. You may be wondering what an extension ledger is in the end. So extension ledgers themselves are used for the creation of additional management views for reporting purposes. One or even several extension ledgers can be based on the same standard ledger. But this also means that the reporting of the extension ledger also always receives the data of the underlying ledger. And it's even possible to stack extension ledgers upon each other for creating even more management views. Last but not least, there's the topic of so-called ledger groups. We can use ledger groups to summarize one or even several ledgers into a group to restrict the posting of financial data to that particular group. So for instance, transaction A is posted explicitly to the ledger group A, while transaction B is explicitly posted to the ledger group B, and so on. When creating a ledger, the SAP system automatically also creates a ledger group with the same ID. The usage of ledger groups is optional though. If we do not define a ledger group during the posting of a financial transaction, then this financial transaction is posted to all ledgers automatically. And here I want to empathize again that the usage is optional. Actually, as a best practice, it is not recommended to use the ledger groups anymore, especially not in an S4HANA Greenfield approach. The only exception is in asset accounting, where we could have the case of deviating fiscal years between the ledgers, which is only supported by using ledger groups. One more important remark, in ledger groups where we assign more than one ledger to, we must assign one ledger as the leading ledger. So the leading ledger in the ledger group is used to determine the posting period for the posting of financial transactions. And it's also used to check whether the posting period is open for posting. If the leading ledger itself is within a ledger group, then this ledger is automatically also leading in the group. But if we have only non-leading ledgers in a group, we can select one of them as the leading one. Yeah, this marks the end of this more theoretical video. I hope you liked it. If so, then please subscribe to my channel and activate the bell. See you next time.